hello, my name is Hamish Edgar. I work at the National Measurement Standards Laboratory of New Zealand in the temperature section. Today we're going to talk about how to realise something called the ice point, a reference for checking a thermometer. The ice point can be made at home with basic equipment. It will give you a temperature of zero with an accuracy of plus or minus 0.01 degrees. The basics that you will need for the ice point, of course, is ice. The best ice that you can get is prepared out of a food grade ice freezer. It will come in little cubes like this. The cubes will have a well in the centre indicating that they've been made by a washing process. If you do not have access to an ice cabinet that generates these cubes, you can use this stuff. You can pick this up at the supermarket or at a petrol filling station. Your generic party ice, this is food grade ice. It's as good as these are and it will work just fine. The next step is to shave the ice. For that you will need you can do this a variety of ways. The cheapest, hardest method is to use a hammer, a plastic bag and a tea towel. Put the ice into the bag, wrap it with the tea towel, beat it with the hammer until you have ships no bigger than one millimetre, one millimetre on the longest size. Next way is that you can go down to a kitchen, supply, um, kitchen goods supplies shop and purchase little ice shavers like this one. They, this one's just a hand cranked type of unit. Uh, Turn the handle, the blades turn, and you shave your ice. You can use a home kitchen blender. Use the grating disc. Only use the grating disc. Any, um, the ice will smash any other blade that you try to use. So you're, you're purely trying to use these little grating wheels, nothing else. You can buy motorised ice shavers like this little unit here. It's intended for cocktail ice for parties. This will work just fine. All that you do here is throw in a cube or two. And away you go. This is some of what the ice should look like. It, it will look a little bit like snow. Large discrete chips are too big, this is about what you want to be working with. If you are working in a commercial lab and need to prepare large amounts of ice in a short time, you can buy a commercial ice shaving machine. We keep one of these in the laboratory here at Measurement Standards. After you've shaved the ice, the next step is to pack the dewer with the ice. The dewer is just a container to hold the ice point. You can use a number of things. This is a commercially available yogurt maker. Uh, you can use a thermos flask. At MSL we use self-draining vacuum dewer flasks. The, the ice point is the interface between ice, water and air. So it's not just a question of shoveling ice into your dewer. You also have to wet the ice. There are two ways to wet the ice. The first is what I'm doing here, filling the, fl filling the flask with ice and then adding water. This is distilled water or melted ice water. To make, to make certain that there is plenty of water there. Now, it, you, you cannot have water on the bottom, you have to drain the flask. The simplest way, in a very simple flask like this, is to put the lid on, take the flask, and pour, the, pour any excess water straight back out again. This is now ready to be used. The second way to wet the ice is to, is to pre-fill the dewer. Um, fill it to about a third of the way to the required ice level. So that's water, water into an empty container, ice in on top. You can hear it sloshing around in there. Now, that will be too wet. The ice point is the interface between water, air and ice. So we will have to drain it. The, that's now ready to use. 
The reason that we do this is that there is a difference between freshly shaved ice and wetted ice. We look at the two side by side, the freshly shaved ice will look a little bit frostier, the wetted ice will look translucent. The freshly shaved ice may be too cold. The next step before using the ice point is to clean the stems of your thermometers. Any impurity on the thermometer itself will affect the ice point directly. The way that we, the way that we work here at MSL is to use ethanol and a tissue first like this. Be very careful to not splash the ice point with ethanol. Any ethanol on the ice point will lower the temperature. You get, then give your thermometer a very quick wipe. Now any traces of ethanol left on the stem will affect the ice point, so the next step is to wipe again, this time with distilled water. Having done that, you need to make a well in the ice for the thermometer probe. Some of these, th um, it's very tempting to just stab the thermometer straight in. Some of these probes are surprisingly delicate and it's best to use a, a simple metal rod to do this first. Just push straight down, that's it, it's that simple. You then insert your thermometer, like so, and pack the ice around it. It will crush to quite a degree. The next thing is to make sure that your thermometer has the correct immersion. This liquid and glass thermometer, this could be either mercury or alcohol. The ice ideally should be up to the level of the liquid inside the thermometer stem, but at the same time your thermometer should project enough out of the dewer that you can read it. In practice this usually means that you immerse, sorry, insert your thermometer and then have to build a little mound of ice up to the li liquid level inside the thermometer. And then making certain that you can still see the top of the column. For a metal sheath thermometer, you want to get as much immersion as you can. So again, creating a well, inserting the probe, and packing the ice around it. You must then make sure that you wait long enough for the thermometer probe to stabilise before taking an ice point reading. Ballpark figure for wait for stabilisation time is around 10 to 15 minutes. It's just a matter of experience. The first couple of times you do this, it just pays to, to stay there and watch how long it takes to settle down. This is now a fully functioning ice point. This is, this is a reference to the fundamental thermodynamic scale. And you, the, uh, some of you will notice that the thermometer in front of me is reading minus 0.2 degrees C. This indicates that the thermometer is not completely accurate. If you follow the steps outlined in this process, you can make the ice point to an accuracy of plus or minus 0 0.01 of a degree. This process is summed, summed up in a technical guide on our website, which also contains other information and services.